Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and today we are going to make a, um, well, it's sort of like a lariat, but not quite. Um, it's a, sort of a cross between a lariat and a uh, Y necklace. And the reason I say that is because I was originally going to make it like a lariat, but um, since I'm using pearls, I don't want the the uh, lob the large lobster talk claw clasp that I'm going to use to slide up and down on the pearls at all because you know it can damage them some. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm going to put a couple of rings in in a you know very stepped down so that you can wear it a shorter with the longer dangle, or you can make it longer the sh dangle shorter and the necklace itself longer. So let's turn down and we'll see what we can do. Here's what we're going to need. We need some soft flex wire. I'm using, um, well, we need any beading wire, but I'm using soft flex in extreme silver medium. And of course, because you have that, you'll need some crimp tubes. And I have some in here, as well as the little rings that I'm going to use to space up and down the necklace and the um, lobster claw. Isn't this a pretty one? Got this particular clasp in one of my sets from Jesse James Beads. Sorry, I don't remember which set it was because, well, I pulled it out quite a few weeks ago. So anyway, then we are going to need some, spa some spacers. These are some bead caps I'm gonna use as spacers. Also some Saturn beads. side some. I'm going to use some crystals, some small um, natural um, freshwater pearls. Now this huge Baroque one, which I've already got wrapped, is going to be the bottom piece. And then I have some um, medium and smaller Baroque pearls, which will be going these will be at the front, and then these will go around with the back, but they will all be in the same pattern. So let's turn out, let's get started, shall we? I forgot to mention we were also going to use a few of tiny little daisy spacers. So, okay, so we're going to start with this big pearl. We'll get um, the crimp beads out or at least one here to start with, and some of our wire. And the first thing we want to decide is how big, how far do we want to get the, between here and the um, first of our little um, drops. So I think we're just going to do one pattern worth. So we'll just cut off a little wire here. And we will do the first pattern. So we'll just put this on, the crimp tube on. This is two by two crimp tube. Go over our loop here that we made in our, in our pearl. Now this is just, uh, the loop here is just a simple wrapped loop. So we want to put this in here and we want to crimp this down. Now this is a magical crimper. It's got a little round place in the middle. So we will just put that in there, crimp it down, turn it, and crimp some more. Now when you make a magical crimp, it says to crimp the first one and turn it sideways, crimp another one, and then just go around in a circle till you get it so it's not really crimping anymore. And you can pretty much tell when that happens. Tug test, and it looks to be fine. So what we want to do now is to get this um, to get this settled. We're going to use a pattern of um, pearl crystal and then the large baroque crystal down. I mean, a pearl down here at the bottom. So we want to put on a bead cap. Now, the likelihood 
of both these wires going through one of these pearls is extremely slim. So we will probably need to cut this wire down all the way to the base of where it is with the crimp. So you just slide your cutter down till it stops and cut that off. And we want pearl. Now these are small holes, and that's why I say it won't go through twice. Another bead cap. Now one of these little guys to put a little space between the two bead caps, because yes, I'm going to put two bead caps on, one going one way, one going the other, which makes this cool looking little pattern here with our spacers. Now we want one of these large pearls here at the bottom. Isn't that a pretty pearl? And now that we have this strand done, and isn't that pretty, we are going to put in one of these rings. So we'll just put on a crimp tube, slide it around the ring, and then go back in the crimp tube. Now, as I said, this is not going to go into the other pearl. It just won't. It's it. The pearls are too small to have two. Um, the holes in pearls are too small to have um, two strings through them. So you just have to bring her up here and get it relatively tight, and then just crimp it. And then you'll want to cut the excess wire off, of course. So now that we've got that up there, we'll crimp this up. If you don't have a magical crimper, you can use a regular crimps, of course. You could also put colored crystals or whatever you preferred in here. You don't have to just have the clear and the white. And you don't have to use natural pearls, too. You could use um, glass pearls. That would be perfectly fine. And you could do this how I was originally planning, and you don't even have, and you could just string it, just keep stringing it and let your uh, lobster claw go in between um, your beads as you see fit. And I didn't get that all the way off, so let's get that trimmed a little bit more. So next step is to simply go up with the next section, which will be exactly like this and keep going up. Next, of course, we'll cut another piece of wire, hook it here, and go on. And if you don't want to waste wire, you can always um, 
just string this on. And then hook it after you've got all your stringing done. Like I'm going to do right here to show you what I mean. You can see the patterns coming along nicely. Okay, now that we've got that done, we verify that our pattern is looking good, and it is. So we'll just take another crimp tube, slide it on, but instead of bothering to slide it all the way down, just hook it over your ring from this side, push her down into place. Come on, baby, go over, go in, okay? Then go in again. Now these crimp tubes have to have um, two in there to hold your pieces. And they will take three and sometimes even four, but usually no more than three. So um, make sure you're... Your wires aren't crossed. Okay, they look like they're not. Get it into the divot and squish. Turn, squish, turn, squish, turn, turn. Make sure it's good and tight. Tug test. And again, since the pearls won't go all the way down, we want to trim it way close to the crimp. Slide these babies down here and then cut off about what you need here. And as you can see, that sometimes saves you some wire, it's some beading wire. Not necessarily a lot though, because you do need to cut off enough tail to um, string it through easily. Um, if you don't, well, it's hard to get it in. Um, you can. Sometimes you have to use pliers to do it though because it doesn't want to go through and stay there because it's close. So now I have pulled out five of these rings, but I don't think we're going to go up five because we already have a pretty good dangle going here. So we'll probably only go up three. So now that we have this in place, Put it in the middle. And crimp. 
Turn it. Oh, baby. You have pr ever have problems like that where the pieces themselves are getting in your way? Just have to have patience with it. So now we want to trim this. And I have some special trimmers for tight spots, so I'm just going to try those better. See if those work better in here. Just pull this wire up. And get in with my little tight guys. Make sure I've only got the right the wire I want to cut, and then trim it off. And there we go. Next one's done. Now the next one up. You know, I wasn't going to put one of these bigger ones in here, but I may, because that way it keeps that pattern going all the way up to there. And then the next one will be the smaller one. And when we come around, I will probably need to get another one of these out. But I think, yeah, I think we'll do with another big one up here. So now, like I say, we just go on, get the next section. We will again do it right on the spool like I did this this one here. Let's get some wire out. And just start our pattern. Now let's check our pattern. It's fine. So now we'll hook this onto this ring on this side. down and now we'll hook onto this next ring and this is the last ring we're going to actually put in so once we do this we're going to change how we're doing this we're going to start hook it to the um, lobster claw and and now come from the other direction until we come over to the ring
Okay, now we just need to cut this little piece of wire off here. And now, because we've got this side done, we're going to um, put this aside and start with the other side. Now, see how this is going to work? It just sort of, it will just, um, the lobster claw will just slide in whichever ring you want to put on it, it on, and then it will become a dangle. And it can be a long dangle or a if you put it down on this one, it will be a shorter dangle. So now we will start by hooking the next piece of the next wire onto our lobster claw. And then we'll we'll be doing the full size on the lobster claw and going around to where it's going to join up. So I've cut a relatively good sized length of wire so that it'll go around my, your neck and come down so that when the lobster claw goes on, it can be relatively high up there or relatively short, however you wish to make it. So here's our wire. So the next one thing we're going to do is we're gonna hook it to our lobster claw like I say, we'll put this aside for right now. So let's bring the dishes up just a little bit so that the lo this can sit behind. And we'll put it right here until we need it. And then we're going to um, hook on the lobster claw. Come on, baby. Go down on there. There we go. Now, since, um, like the others, it, the pearls are still not going to go down on this wire, we want, we'll just um, put it around, about right there and crimp it up. Okay, give her a tug test and trim this little extra bit off. There we go. And then we're going to start our pattern again. Now the difference is that when we get into where we would have put the ring on the other one, we're going to put two of the Saturn beads. So let's get our bead caps out. Come on, baby. And we'll put the small pearl. Now, because this is the side by the lobster claw, we're going to put those two um, big baroques in instead of the medium sized ones. Oops, forgot the bead cap. It's always better to catch these mistakes before they get to the point where you have to tear it apart.
I actually think I may have cut my wire a little bigger than I wanted, but if I did, that's fine. Like I've said many a times, better too long than too short. Though, as far as this necklace is concerned, I could, I could live with it being shorter if I ended up doing that to it. But, so now here we have reached that spot where I was talking about where um, this would be where we would be making our connection here with the rings. So instead of doing that, we'll put on one of these little ones like we have been doing. But then we will get out some, uh, we will be putting on a Saturn bead. And we'll do two Saturns. Oh, there we go on there. Fine, I'll use a different one. And then three of our little ones. Now, see, we'll have this pattern here now between these. Now, this pattern is a lot bigger than our ring is, obviously. But I think we're still going to leave it like that. Let's see what it looks like. You know, that might be a little wider than I want it to be. So let's take off this portion here. In fact, we'll go all the way to this one Saturn. And we will put the three Saturns here. I mean, the three small ones here and just one more Saturn instead of having four in this spot. So let's do it like this. And then we'll see what that looks like. Oops, knocked the Saturn off. Come on, baby. And I think that gap is a better gap, don't you? Hmm. Now we're up. We're actually a little bit too short. Not a lot, but a little bit. If we want to keep that gap about the same. So maybe what we should do is put two littles Another Saturn, two more littles. Let's see how this looks. That OGB just doesn't want to go on, does it? Now let's see how this looks. Maybe we'll like this better. Oh, I actually sort of like that. Let's see how of a comparison it is with the length. Now the length is a little longer, but I think we're going to leave it like that. Let's put this baby back to the back again. 
and because we're gonna it's time now to start our pattern over again so and this is how we're going to go along now until we get to where we want to um, hook, it, hook it to that other ring over there Like I was saying, if you wish to make this more colorful, um, you could put a colored crystal here. Or like I say, if you, well, when it comes right down to it, th these pearls are pretty expensive. So uh, if you don't want your, you want, don't want to go through the expense, you can get glass pearls, at least in this spots. And, uh, even use um, a big crystal as opposed to uh, the pearl in these um, other spots to um, make it a little different and more affordable. But this is one of those your choice kind of things. Okay, I think we've gotten to the end of our pattern again. So now we need to do the metal pattern. So that was this one, one saucer, two littles, the next saucer, These trays are just wonderful. I love them for putting in things while I'm working on them. Um, in case you're wondering, we get I get those at the Dollar Tree. And uh, Randy Brown from Thunder Horse Descendant uh, told me about those. And I am very grateful that she did because I really like them. They are really handy to have. So if you're... Uh, Wanting something to hold your beads nicely while you're working, that is a very good place to go is Dollar Tree and get these little, um, these little dishes. Now this time we're going to switch to these slightly smaller um, Baroque pearls. So, um, as we're at getting to that place where we're going to be going around the back of your neck anyway, so you don't need those big, huge ones in, uh, in that regard. They're still really pretty, just not quite as big as all. There's a little kink in my wire there. That's all right. It will still go. As you can see, they're just a tiny bit smaller. They are a little bit smaller, but not an atrocious lot, and they will work quite nicely. These littles just want to hit the floor today, it seems like. Now don't forget to check your pattern every once in a while to make sure that you didn't miss something. 
and mess yourself up before you get way far. Better to, to keep checking and find it before it gets way up the way. So we just keep going up our pattern here. We're almost at that place where we're going to go back to just the metals again. Now this necklace is going to be pretty fancy, but I could still see you wearing it with like a silk blouse and a pair of jeans. Let's see how we're doing here. May have to get out some more bead caps. Well, actually, no me about it. I am going to have to get out some more bead caps. But So let's put a bead stopper on this side and we will I will go and get some more bead caps. So now we need one more set of the Saturns and then I think we're just going to do just one more of this pattern and we will then hook it on over there. Well, we'll see what it looks like. Stay up here, baby. Okay. And now I think we're so now we need one more set of the Saturns and then I think we're just gonna do just one more of this pattern and we will then hook it on over there. Well, we'll see what it looks like. Stay up here, baby. I think we're at our final set of this pearl crystal pattern.
So there's a big strand of pearls and then the other piece which we are going to hook down here. So that's going to make for a pretty long necklace and that's okay, that's what we're wanting. So let's see how long this is. I may decide I need to do one more turn. If I do, I'll need to get out one more pearl, pearl but that's all right. Let's see how big we are here. Okay, we're at, well, since the lobster claw will be part of the size, looks like we're about at 24 inches. The next step is just simply to bring in the other side and crimp this wire to this ring and then it will be done. So we can put these aside back here so they're not in our way and then we need one of these crimps. So pull one out. And we will crimp this side and see, even though I sort of guesstimated how much I wanted, I still have at least a good six inches extra here that will go up on top. So into my bead pile, so I'm um, wire pile, just in case I just need a smaller piece like this for like a bracelet or something. So. So let's get this. Well, we want to wriggle it up into a little bit when we put it in so that we don't um, tighten it too much. Um, if you tighten it too much, it's really stiff. So let's get that baby going. We want that down there just a teeny touch more, I think. And we need to get our crimping pliers in here. Get that in the divot. Oops, pulled that too much. Again, in, tug test, looks good, and clip this extra wire off. There we go. And we are done. Now it just looks like a big strand like that, but then you hook it to one of these rings and voila necklace like i say this is like a y necklace or a, or a combination sort of y um lariat because it can go into different sizes um we put it up here then it becomes shorter at the neck and longer dangle so you can see here Sort of hard to see that, isn't it? So let's put it like this, maybe. But, uh, so like I say, long dangle, shorter necklace around the neck part, or you can push it, put it way down here on this very last ring. And you have a much longer necklace and, and uh, with a much shorter dangle. So, isn't that gorgeous? And I hope you enjoyed making this. Let's turn up and I will hold it up for you. Okay. This has been really fun making this beautiful Baroque pearl and um, regular freshwater pearl and crystal necklace. As you can see, it's quite long. 
when it's on the bottom ring with the with the shorter dangle there with this giant rope girl at the bottom so quite a bit longer and then like i say um it's long enough you could just throw this one over your head as it is even with my hair thing it goes over my head but um then just take it out of here and move it up if you want to make it shorter so with a longer dangle shorter necklace longer dangle or there i shortened it up to the second and then there's of course the third which would make it sh way shorter around the neck and much longer so i think this necklace is just beautiful i hope you do too and like i say there's many ways to make this your own um, if you don't want to put in the rings, you could just string everything there, make a, would make a, a spot probably between these, like take out the middle one and put more small ones and you could just uh, hook your hook there, especially if you had a smaller hook that wouldn't slide over everything. Use glass pearls rather than regular pearls, different colors of crystal. Um, there are a number of ways you could make this your own, but, uh, I really love it. I think it turned out great. Definitely what I envisioned. So I hope everyone else loved it as well. And I hope you had enjoyed uh, this tutorial. So this has been Rose from Roses Garden. And we'll see you the next time we come.